Hello folks and welcome back to uh, Suionia. I can't even pronounce this. Basically, super ancient Sweden. And uh, we are, we're back. I'm still on a review copy of the game. So, uh, so things are not super final, but uh, it is a press, press uh, code that I've received. And we are playing as uh, a migratory tribe that we're trying to make super civilized and amazing. I'm also learning a lot of mechanics. I've been have have time to. I recently had time to do a let's play, or not a let's play, but a uh, a multiplayer event with a, a lot of other people, and um, I learned quite a bit from that. I've also seen other YouTubers finding different. Uh, let's not say exploits, but certain ways you can use the game to to your advantage, right? So uh, it's not it's not like game breaking it's part of the game and uh, the developers themselves have used it so I feel like I, I think I might go ahead and use that as well things are not going actually too bad for us it says here that we're making 3,000 gold per month but I think that's kind of just broken temporarily until we unpause uh, so we should also start moving pops actually I forgot about that we can move people around uh, not just in terms of migrating them as armies, but actually move them, uh, and that will help us colonize stuff. Maybe move our c the citizens that we have in southern areas over to northern areas. What do I mean by that? Well, you see, we have there's this thing, right? Tech. We're making 0 0.3 points per month. How do you get tech? You need citizens. Citizens in a tribal state give they're unhappy, and that gives unrest. But your capital province can't get unrest. So, if we make everyone citizens in our capital region here, our capital province, we should probably not have a problem. We'll see, we'll try, it's not certain, but I think that's a way we can uh, solve a lot of issues. We're also gonna go ahead and uh, I noticed on the economy uh, thing here, okay, so we're losing loyalty quite quickly on all these people, but if we go economy, here we go, Wages, we can increase the wages and increase loyalty by quite a bit. Or rather, decrease the, the loss of it. Unfortunately, there's, um, if we were a settled tribe, there would be this one thing here. Where is it? Is it this one? No. Ah, military administration that give monthly admiral and general loyalty. And would be great. Unfortunately, since we're a, a settled or a migratory tribe, we have to have two military ideas to get the extra points. And I'd rather have the points than the loyalty at the moment, so uh, we're going to keep it this way. We will increase wages, though. Right, so we have two provinces, East Gothia and Herulia here. And I'll just move all the citizen pops of Herulia to my capital. And then we're gonna make all the city or all the pops in our capital region into citizens. So yeah, we're moving a bunch of people here from these areas to be. Yeah, I know this one is in East Gothia, so it doesn't really matter. But I just want a higher concentration of people in uh, in Birka there. Someone asked me to show the culture map mode, and here we have it. Uh, all of this is in the Germanic culture group, so it should be fine to conquer. Uh, and yeah, you can see little enclaves and exclaves in different places, especially as you start moving towards the uh, Mediterranean here with a lot of Greek colonies all over the world, Afghanistan, Persia, even India. This is, after all, only, well, now it's more than 18 years, but so it's more like 40 years after Alexander the Great's death. Oh, shit. I, um... Just to, I think I just arranged, or, um, not arranged, but I uh, imprisoned my wife. An event came up about her doing something bad, and then, yeah, she's she's in prison. Ah, uh, this one's 43, 7 Marshall. I mean, the stats aren't amazing, but, you know, loyalty is high. Decent prominence. Zero corruption. Lots of health. And, uh... A dumb, wise, silver-tongued, sarcastic, a tolerant person. All right. Honestly, I'm kind of afraid of doing the tech thing, but you know what? Let's do it. All right, we've improved a few pops. 
We're gaining a little bit more research tech or research speed. Let's actually pause while we do this. The thing I'm, I'm mostly afraid of is, you know, the cost being too much, but I feel like the more tech we get, the better stuff we can do, and that we can just snowball after we have all the tech we want. Alright, 2.1 points for 1.3. Sorry, 1.73. What am I saying? Alright, we've run out of oratory power for now. It's not, we don't really gain much, but what's our tech now? Oh, it's, it's not bad, bad anymore. It's not even showing up. 3.5 at 81%. Well, we want to get that to 300% efficiency. Some scandal about a wife to the high priest, yada yada. Just have them flogged, right? Aha! Alright, so. Uh, I moved some pops from the south over to... Ah, loyal war chief. That's fantastic. Over to Vikbu. So then we have 10 pops in Vikbu. Which is, allows us to colonize this place over here. And uh, Gotland as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll do that in a second. Anglian Revolt. Uh, I guess, since it's a civil war, I'll join you. Up north here, especially in the winter, I, I do prefer the uh, po political map mode. I mean, if you're down south, right, as Rome or whatever, it doesn't really matter much. But this uh, transparency with lots of trees against the white just does not make... Uh, like, you can barely see the borders. Also, another thing about tech, I think we're going to rush it also because in order to actually settle... Or, first we need to settle. That's going to only be based on centralization as far as I'm aware. But, uh, in order for us to, to then become a republic or a monarchy, we actually need... Uh, admin tech 5. I think it's... they don't call them admin techs? I think it's civ civic advances 5. And we also of course want roads. That'd be very nice, but that's kind of in the future, so we need that tech. Yes, centralize. Centralize my people. Also, we just colonize Gotland as well. I wonder, can we... oh, what? That's... oh no, it's not in the map. Right, I was like, can we colonize that? No. No, we can't. Uh, what's this? Raising a host. Oh, you hate me, though. I don't have manpower. Or, I mean, I have money, but not, not really enough. I want to keep the money. And also, you already have zero loyalty. No. Man, my personal wealth of the, of the character of the tribal leader is 59 here. Uh, this other client chief here with 70 loyalty, 69, has 600. And this one, <laughs> our hated enemy, has 1,300 gold. It's crazy. Personal gold. No wonder he uh, he wants to take over the power. I wonder why, why he hasn't done it yet. Even more tribesmen just coming over. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. You know, I haven't even noticed that the all the other tribes here, except, yeah, obviously in the less populated areas, uh, they all have, like, civic advances and a bunch of advances, so we're kind of behind, actually. And I definitely want to catch up. Send 22 gold to some random dude, or lose 10 loyalty with our elder. Eh, whatever. Alright, I moved some pops around as well to... Uh, why, why did I keep clicking that map mode? There. Uh, to Aska. And that means we have 10, so we can finally colonize that, and then we can do it. Let's see, let's just move... Is that a different province? Yeah, it is. Alright. We'll, uh, we'll move... Just a tribesman. Uh, what the hell? I'm pretty sure Vitaya was ours. I don't know how they lost enough pops just to stop being ours, but okay. I guess I'll uh, move. Well, at least we have four people. Ugh. Oh, religious advances. Great. And of course, we want population growth. There, we recolonized Vitalia. Glorious. I think we want even more population growth. Anglin revolt again? Alright, I guess. 20,000? Oh, a fool. Oof. His loyalty again. I don't care. I really don't care. We got another uh, tech level here. Oratory advance. But we are going to go for... 
Um, what was it? Omen duration. Because plus 10%, I mean, that's pretty good. Reduces the overall cost of omens. Capital import routes would be great, but of course, I mean, we can spend a lot of civic power. We can spend on all of this, but we want, we don't, we can't even fill the current import route because no one wants to trade with us. So we're going to go research points and also civic tech investment. And we also want the best people researching here, of course. All the clans belong to us. Oh, research efficiency. 5 point... Or 99%. Oh, over 100. Here we go. Things are starting to heat up. Ooh, natural resources. 1,004 points. Let's do that. Chariot and light cavalry cost. And eventually enslavement efficiency. National slave output. For ones who are civilized, I suppose. And ambush is nice, but this, the defense, although I also realize that apparently there's one here, heavy inf infantry offense, which is kind of cool, but uh, the graphics here are kind of, you know, viking shields, so we'll, uh, we'll go for that, even though <laughs> it's not at all the time of the vikings. Monthly centralization <gasps> for five years, plus point two, lovely. Oratory power is crazily... Like, you just use it for everything. It's the thing I keep running out of. And also manpower. Uh, but, I mean, oratory power is basically you can use it to... Uh, promote people, to assimilate people, to... I think it importation of trade goods as well. Um... Yeah, you can use it for the, you need to use it for the laws. You can use you have to use it when you're bribing people. It's just everywhere. I just cannot keep up, especially earning only three per month. Anglia going to war. Herulia, Simbra, and Varnia. I'm not really gonna help them unless they really screw this up. Oratory power or money. Uh, oratory power, of course. More pops. It's all about more pops. Now that we do have a uh, maxed out capital trade, let's see, does anyone want to trade? No one. Oh, tech advances, fantastic. Legal patronage. I know it's very little loyalty, but every loyalty is a little bit of good loyalty. Every, every loyalty is good loyalty, as I just coined. Newfound tribesmen. Soon is always open to new tribes. One of our clan chiefs just died, which means that we inherited his army. And it's kind of nice, but I think I'll just split it up and, uh, but, but I can't keep up everything. Hollerix, I'm so sorry, but you know, you're older than me, you're ready to die, and you've always been on this loyal. I'm not going to accept it. The Langobards declared war on Anglia. Alright, I guess we are at war then, but with whom? Uh, Langobardia. And that's it. No one else? We're not fighting anyone else? Avonia? Avinia? Oh, that glorious research efficiency. Look at it rise. This loyal clan. Look at that artwork. Lovely. So, the disloyalty of uh, Hollerix has been apparent to everyone for, well, basically our entire lifetime, which has been like the last 50 years of game. Uh, almost 50 years of the game, right? Uh, and the rest of the nation looks to us to see how we will respond to this bit of autonomy. Uh, we must nip it in the bud. We will put an end to this charade. Technology speed plus five? Are you kidding me? Of course we'll take that. All I want is for me to die so that we can uh, have a new chief. However, our new heir, instead of being Hollerix, the asshole, uh, who was actually... Well, now he's not that decent, but like... Uh, I think it was a 5-4 or something. Uh, we're going to be succeeded by someone who has zero oratory power. And how old are you? 48? God damn it. Hollerix is dead. Long live the new Hollerix. You have... Oh, well, oratory 3, but everything else is quite decent, and you're the heir. I think, uh, I think you can be quite a good ruler, actually. The king is dead, long live the king. Well, not the king, but the tribal chief. After the death of Hildrauk Gundrud, the clan chiefs of uh, Suionia 
uh, meant to elect a fierce, strong leader to shepherd our people in these ever-changing times. After much deliberation, David Holerix, uh, or Davidus Holerix was installed in a lavish ritual to which all clan dignitaries were invited. The thing is, yeah, he's of the wrong culture. Which will make people disloyal, but, uh, yeah, we'll have to, uh, this is gonna be annoying now. What the fuck, we went from a glorious 130% tech stuff to 70? Is it pop happiness that's affecting this? Tribal chief, yeah, it's probably some culture clashing. I think Pretani is one of the... British culture groups here, but I, I can't seem to find it on the actual map, if there's any majority populations anywhere. I have a child, but I think the mother died in childbirth. Yeah. I went to Herod and married someone with... I mean, I don't think the stats actually affect us that much, uh, but their personality, you know, it's... She's not gonna gain corruption and stuff, so that's that's mostly what I'm looking for. All right, this clan here. So the prior army that I created here, the second Birka host. He became a clan chief, uh, and some of the units here were loyal to him, which means I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna have to pay for them, even though they're you know it's like the state. We as the Clan chief are paying for his troops, even though they're my troops. Ah, oh, it's so annoying and weird. I get it, but it's just ugh. God damn it. Oh, I grew hair, and also apparently I'm uh, I'm deceitful, which gives me corruption, and that's actually really annoying. I know I complain a lot, but you know, that's what I do. That's how I learn. To master these games by finding all the no, I don't master these games at all. I'm I'm decent. I'm a decent player. I'm no, I'm no flurry worry, so to speak. For those not acquainted, flurry worry is basically an absolutely insane EU4 player. Like he'll conquer the world in in uh, record time. Like in I think I saw him do it in 15 hours. I want to say absolutely insane. Nobody here in the region is growing their pops like me. I mean, well, I'm hard to pr press because uh, we do have 92 pops. That's quite a bit uh, for this region. The ma map may not really show it, but I think we were we did look much darker, and now we have much higher concentrations of a lighter green color. One day, perhaps, we will look like this. Oh, imagine having that. I mean, how much is that? Almost uh, 60, so, so almost 70 I want to say. Open negotiations, yes, we'll uh, we'll go for the diplomatic route there. Uh, monthly government loyalty would be nice, but the thing is, to have a, a governor, we have to actually expand outside of S Scandia itself, right? A governor only applies on these l much bigger um, provinces. So I think we won't need that for a while. All right, we're at three, four, four. So we've kind of caught up to our neighbors, not necessarily. Uh, we've definitely not caught up. Oh, we've almost caught up with Rome. That's crazy. Uh, Egypt, we had a time. We had have ahead of the curve. That should be expected. But we're already ahead of Phrygia. We're ahead of the uh, uh, Seleucids. Uh, maybe yeah, not the Greeks. So, we're, we're doing pretty well, actually. And if we keep this kind of research speed and even increase it even further, I think we can uh, really gain the edge we, we want. The only thing I wish at this point is that we had more oratory power. Of course, like, we've been spending it like crazy people uh, with the pops, uh, promoting them and stuff, but that's, it's still, yeah, we need a better ruler, basically. That will give us better oratory power. Like, even this guy. Garbage. Three. I want better. I want 19s. No, just kidding. Well, apparently it can go above 10, actually. So, um, I don't know if there's a limit. 
Anyway, I think it's time to wrap up this episode right here. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you're also looking forward, just like me, to seeing the continuation of this and where we end up. In the meantime, this being Game Gapster, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment down below. This has been Game Gapster. Farewell.